Okay, so we've got our cuttlefish ring buffed out and ready to go. Let's see if we can get that in focus. So you can see we've buffed out all the perimeters. We've got our prongs ready to set our stone. You want to check and make sure your stone is in and still fits within your footprint. So take the time and make sure that that's behaving as you expected. And then generally before I knock the prongs down, I want to make sure they get annealed because if you are buffing and filing, you can work hard in the silver. And when you're trying to lay down those prongs, once you get them started, it's very hard to get the prongs back up without breaking them off. So I'm going to just torch these little guys. I'm just going to hold it with some pliers. And I'm using just a standard map gas torch here. camera may not have picked that up, but we got to about cherry red heat. It's hard to tell with all that light, um, but you can tell that the silver is now more blackened, and that's fine. That'll buff right off. We're going to cool it down. And that's the whole reason why we had the water here. And the torch I was using was a map gas torch, which is mixed acetylene propane. That's what the map stands for. I like I like the mix because the propane's hotter, a little cleaner, but it's got enough acetylene in where you're not burning your metal super quick. So anyway, that's what we've got. Let's get that in focus. So annealed prongs. And then we'll get ready to uh do our artistic embellishing. So I could just knock these straight over, but that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give them some wiggle. So I've got these tapered pliers that give me some options here. There we go. You can see that broke off. It's a little too brittle. It's okay, you wanna know that now before you get too invested in what you're doing. Um, so what I may do with this prong that broke off right here, is file it to a point. If I want to see what kind of movement I got, I need to know if this silver is extremely brittle or if it's relatively soft and annealed. And what I may do on the second go around is give it another annealing before I lay these prongs down. I'm just giving them little, little wiggles. A couple of little wiggles. That one is pretty, pretty brittle. And then if you look closely, see if we can get the light to show this. Come here, light. Right here, there are some slight divots from just the compression of the plier, right? So I'm squeezing as I'm turning. I'm trying to get a nice radius, but that's actually denting the surface of my prong. So I just want to make sure that that's on there firmly. And then I'll switch to time lapse and give this a light filing to shape everything the way I want. Okay, so let's cover what happened. I took the time to file all these parts, and I'm a little worried that one or two of these tips may break off as I go to bend them down. So what I did was I pre-bent them 
in a manner in which uh, when I do the arc to capture the stone, right, I can drop the cabochon in sideways and sort of shake it down in place and it seats the way I want and then I know when I go to knock these down with pliers, um, I'm not so worried about the tips breaking up and if they do, that's fine. There's nothing to be done at this point. The thing about cuttlefish is you have to learn to accept whatever it's giving you in terms of your casting properties, how you did your alloy, and how you want your stone setting to look. So rather than show you every little bit, we're just going to give it a go and see what what comes down as we go to clamp. And I'm using, um, these are brass jawed pliers, they're a little softer, and that just allows me to grab on firmly to my part. I'm just using that plier to knock down my stone, or I'm sorry, my prong, directly onto my stone by just squeezing against the bottom. And it's a very nice firm stone setting, and it's one of those things where when you're doing this style setting, you plan on really getting in the way of your stone. It's not about showing as much of the stone as possible, but it's more about incorporating uh, a really weird design into a really cool stone. And I like the Peter site because of the way it's, if you look, the way it's got these swirling colors that go through it. I like the idea of the prongs doing the same sort of process. But it's really about getting in there with your pliers. Let me get the lighting a little better. And then trying to knock this over as gently as possible without hitting the stone or any of the other parts that you may have put on your design. There we go. Okay. And this is a ton of grip force, okay? You don't have to set your stones this way. Your prongs don't need to be this big. You can file them super delicate and they'll go down without much effort. But we're just trying to do a simple design. It's got kind of a do-it-yourself-at-home rugged look that fits well uh, and matches with the Peter site. So I'm just locking these in now. So these are kind of set up in a way where they look like claws, they look like teeth, they look like tendrils, they look like horns. There's a lot to be played with there. And so any other detail work I want to do with these additional prongs is entirely up to me. And I'll probably switch to time-lapse, goof off for a bit, and then come back and discuss what happened and uh, maybe get some better lighting so you can see what this stone is doing. Let's talk about how we got here. The brass jaw pliers are really nice because they seat on the flat bottom of the three-part ring. And that allows you to get in there with a good angle to compress the prongs down with the jaws and just pinching will do what you need. Uh, beforehand, these prongs were pre-curved so that they would match up fairly well to the radius of the cabochon, but you can still see there's some gap. So there may be fiddling that's to be done later when you're coming back in and just trying to compress it a little bit further. That's okay. One of the positions that was used was actually the jaws in full extension here where they're really wide. And that's used to knock down prongs at this outside radius. Just remember that as the top and bottom jaws are in compression like this, it's going to want to push the ring out of the holder. So you have to use a lot of force with your hands to hold it while these top and bottom jaws are compressing from the sides. And then one thing to be aware of is you don't want to slip directly over your prong and contact your stone, right? That's pretty hard to catch with the camera, but you can see that if you squeeze, there's a step off where it wants to contact the stone. And if you have a softer stone, that can crack or chip or break your stone. And you don't want that at the very end, okay? Now, the other technique that was used was 
Some of these prongs wouldn't go down and there's no way to get in there with pliers. And so you can use a wood block or a soft material. Plastic works as well. Um, depending on the hardness of your wood or the, uh, the plastic you're using, it'll leave more or less of an impression. And that will be an advantage because as you roll your silver, the prongs seat in and that allows you to have a small divot that's holding firmly on the prong. And then you can crush really hard with your whole body to push that prong forward. And again, if you're using a softer stone, it may not be able to support that compression. So you do need to be careful with fours and fives, labradorites, sugilites, etc. But ultimately, the wood block is just allowing you to push more uniformly while the ring band is allowing you to feel what you're doing during that rocking motion to seat those prongs. So if you don't have uh, brass jaw pliers, that's okay. They sell nylon jaw pliers. I, I like these, but they mar really quickly. So if you're doing anything that's got this sort of tentacly, toothy, curved, death metal look, uh, it's going to shred the nylon jaw pliers. You can also use steel jaw pliers. Uh, you can wrap them with either rubber bands or leather. And what I'll do very often is I'll just pierce a hole so that I can lay the, the suede part of the leather on the interior of whatever I'm doing. And then if I need protection on the top of my plier, uh, you can add protection that way too. Wood, wood jaws work, plastic jaws work, leather jaws. It's really just a matter of whether or not you can get a material that's softer than the material you're trying to bend so that there's no marring on the surface. But that is a three-part cuttlefish cast ring with a stone setting and the stone there, get it in focus, it's Peter's set.